Chapter 1 Earth Birth Centuries of planetary exploitation and threats of nuclear annihilation had raised the pain of humanity to a cry heard across the Milky Way. On a faraway planet orbiting a giant red sun, a group of alien beings heard the cry and toiled to help the planet Earth. I was a member of a fifth density group on a big blue planet near the galactic center. We were at the gathering place, where we had just completed several hours of light work. It was our regular service in which we joined minds to stream love and light across the stars to the third density beings on Earth. I turned to gaze at my companion, Oman. There must be more we can do, brother, I thought projected. The sorrow of humanity deepens. It hurts my heart and weighs heavy in my mind. Oman shifted his body, seated cross-legged on the ground to face me. We knew the struggle to choose polarity would increase human collective trauma. It is the way with most third-density planets, when they transcend into the higher fourth-density vibration. Come, let us partake. I haven't eaten since the last gathering. Bowls of delicious golden ambrosia were passed around from the crystal cauldron. It was our only form of sustenance, exactly what was needed to replenish our physical forms. As I swallowed and filled my gut, others stirred around us. I could sense the murmuring of private telepathic exchanges as they sipped the nectar. I contemplated the sad vibration until I finished my meal. Walk with me, brother. Oman had stood up and was reaching his big blue hand over to pat my shoulder. I passed my bowl toward the center of the group and stood too. Humans would never accept us, being twice their average height, with stout limbs and a thick head. Yet we were of a finer substance than flesh and bone, and very light on our feet. Oman and I set a rhythmic stride, moving away from the gathering, walking quietly. I admired the inspiring beauty of our planet, with its empty and lifeless terrain that stretched to the horizon. The beauty was in its potential. Our minds had achieved the capacity to build or create virtually anything we desired out of the basic elements under our feet. Buildings, vehicles, and electronic gadgets were useless to us. Yet we knew how essential they were to less evolved societies that were trying to find their way in this big dance of cosmic evolution that connects all of us across time and space. I was most content with an empty expanse of land and an idea for a device that I could build, with the hope of telepathically transmitting it to some capable Earth inventor. I had also found deep contentment doing light work with my group until recently, when my feeling changed. I feel we are streaming a mere point of light into the growing darkness, I projected to Oman, making no effort to hide the disquiet in my mind. But I carefully concealed it from the others. Our light is bright, and there are humans who are illuminated. The law of squares is powerful in our group. Oman knew that the near-perfect harmony of our group created a transmission much greater than the sum of our 200-plus members. The power was equal to the square of that number. I'm not feeling it as a powerful illumination, but as a futile gesture. The vibration of human suffering has strengthened despite all of our efforts. Don't you feel it? I flung my arms toward the copper-colored sky to dramatize. We had gotten well away from the group, and I no longer needed to hide the feelings that made me so different. If our work inspires only one human to choose the path of service to others, I have accomplished my mission. Oman turned towards me, stretching his arm wide. Brother, we have likely done better, can't you know this? I kept my expression neutral, despite the fact that it was easy for him to say that. He was perhaps the most evolved of our subgroup of 200 centrics, and very close to becoming an elder. I had believed that I was close to becoming an elder too, but I could see then that I was starting to suffer like those earthlings who needed help. I understand we have had some successes, but it isn't enough, I projected from my disquieted mind. There must be a better way. 
I could sense Oman's concern that the harmony of our group was about to be decreased by one, which would erode the law of squares and weaken our transmission. He mind-melded with me, reviewing our other form of service, the design and transmission of devices that could reduce the need for menial human labor. Things like electrical generators, mechanical gadgets, and computer components. Remember how the elders named me after we transmitted my design that became the O-ring? Oman held his thumbs and forefingers together to make a perfect circle and took a quick leap off the ground as if to congratulate himself. A surge of bubbly energy pulsed through my body at the sight of Oman pretending to be a human comedian, and I felt my face break into a toothless grin. I put my hand up to my face and pushed the grin back down. We had no need for names. Getting named was the human equivalent of earning a badge or wearing an adornment. Therefore, Oman's name had become something of a joke between us, a trophy he'd never wanted in the first place. Yes, do you recall the elder who said the O-ring was too simple to help on Earth? I projected. After it was patented by a human, it catalyzed the Industrial Revolution on Earth. And the same elder said, Simplicity has merit. I had to contain my laugh bubbles. I loved the elders with their profound wisdom and was amused by the rare occasion when one slipped up. But then I remembered I had taken years to design a high-speed transportation system that had not been approved for transmission to Earth. The laugh bubbles coalesced into a dark shadow that made my feet heavy. I compressed my thoughts away from Oman, and we walked on in silence. What was wrong with me? I had to get my mind realigned with our group's mission to help humanity. It wasn't that I didn't want to help. I was desperate to. I was aching to ease the cries of sorrow. A solution came, and I projected a buoyant thought. I can conceive of new inventions that could help humanity. Perhaps I would do better to focus on them and avoid the gatherings for some time. Oman slowed, thinking. Removing my disharmony from the light working would strengthen their transmission of light to Earth, a good thing, and what I wanted. Then he stopped and kicked at the ground. I watched the dust from Oman's foot trail off in a strong wind that was picking up. Your isolation from our group risks depolarization, he projected. I knew from his vibrations that he was gravely concerned. It could lead to the path of self-service. He shared his vision of me as a lone, compact entity that shunned all others. A being that grew only in service to itself, seeking not to illuminate others, but to gain the power to extinguish their light and grow the darkness. I could become a creature of great evil. Oman sent a plea for help to the sixth identity. It was received by the being we knew as Angelic Mentor. Having no need to remove her light body from her group, she thought projected to us. We sensed her presence and looked up to see a brilliant ball of light descend. It took the form of a golden being with a white aura, standing as tall as us, but exquisitely beautiful and more delicate. I greet you in love and light. I sensed your concerns and I hope to serve you in your mission to illuminate others. After projecting her greeting, she read our thoughts and analyzed Oman's concern that I might defect to the negative path. We are humbled to see you, mentor, we projected. We bowed our heads toward her and opened our minds. She looked into our hearts and saw that they were pure and vibrant. The probability vortices are strongly against one of you losing your positive polarity and reorienting onto the negative path. You both appear to only seek service to others. Oman projected a deep sense of relief and understood he should leave me with our mentor. He pressed his palms together as a sign of respect, bowed, and began to run toward the great hall several miles away. We had previously met this mentor, a light being who was one of 10 million souls fused in unitive consciousness, free to roam about the galaxy without the need for a planet. Her presence had filled us with wonder, and I knew Oman was now energized and inspired. Angelic Mentor focused her attention on me. Your compassion for Earth people touches me. 
as they are in great need now. I hope to ease the pain that their distress causes you. As the area around her heart chakra grew brighter and shifted colors, I could feel the unrest in my mind soften. We are losing to the darkness, I projected. It is difficult to sit with my group and transmit happy light with cries of sorrow reverberating my thoughts. Sit with me in the gathering place, she projected. Yes, mentor. I was energized by her presence, as was Oman. I turned and sprinted the distance, arriving back at the crystal cauldron in under a minute. Mentor had already projected herself there and was seated in a quiet spot not far from me. I stood for a moment, awed by her ability to utilize intelligent energy. Group members were still around, watching us from a polite distance. The appearance of a radiant six-density being on our planet was not a common event. Angelic Mentor and I sat cross-legged on the ground facing each other. Her aura filled the space with shimmering bands of warm light, which contrasted with the blue glow of my lower dimensional form. We waited, her usual way of instruction. Teach, learn, she often called it. Her complex thoughts sometimes escaped my full understanding. As much as our fifth density group was millions of years evolved beyond third density human consciousness, she was many millions of years evolved beyond mine. After some time, her thought sphere began to fill my awareness, and I grasped what I could. There are cosmic laws which will aid you when you are in the service of others. We cannot control destiny. Suffering is also a catalyst for deeper seeking. The path must remain individual, yet ultimately will always lead to one. I began a mental exploration to find an answer, reflecting on how cosmic laws empowered service to others. I then contemplated my desire to help others, which had caused my dissatisfaction with the fifth density activity of streaming light. My attention turned to the devices that could help people on Earth. I tried to envision something better than the transportation system I had already created, something faster, safer, and cleaner than vehicles or aircraft. I recalled the rejection of my device, my offering to humanity, and almost immediately disappointment began to once again gnaw at my resolve. I sat and waited patiently. I knew my mind well enough. When it couldn't find an answer, waiting in silence had a way of delivering one. Suddenly, Angelic Mentor's presence shifted. My mind attended to this new energetic pattern just in time for a wave of vibration to shoot through me. Thoughts scattered through my mind, prompting a realization as clear as our golden-colored midday sky. I must be born on Earth as a human to help people directly. I projected this realization at Angelic Mentor with a sense of utter conviction. To my surprise, she replied immediately. I have walked among the people of Earth. I have been on several human missions. The problem there is beyond what I can fully fathom. The depths of distortion in human minds and the temptations assailing them in choosing their polarity are most difficult. I sensed that she was pleased with my discovery and knew she would never influence my free will to choose. Yet I had chosen. My sudden conviction was not enough to gain angelic mentor support. So I projected my understanding of the veil of forgetting that would suspend all memories of my recent life. I shared my knowledge that if I failed to make a positive impact on Earth, I might be caught in the karmic web, forcing me to be reborn again and again until I succeeded. You should also understand that although succeeding on a human mission will advance your soul evolution, you will not know it during your time on Earth. That is part of the pain and joy of being human. You will reach the end of your life, never knowing your destiny. Angelic Mentor replied, projecting her final warning carefully. I understand and choose Earth Birth Mentor. 
I request your support. I was delighted to find that my mental gridlock regarding failing to help humanity had been broken. This epiphany truly was the one I'd been looking for. You may inform your elders and ask for their collaboration to transfer your consciousness for Earth birth. Angelic Mentor studied me carefully, her aura a fluctuating array of color. You will be called Newman for New Human. I couldn't help but smile. I was getting a merit badge just for choosing this mission, one that I would have to forget the moment I was born on Earth. But something inside me knew this wasn't just an epiphany or even a choice. This was my destiny. I had to do it. I leave you as one in the infinite creator. Be blessed on your journey, Newman. Our group met again at the gathering place. We streamed light across the galaxy and my mind was at peace. The cries of sorrow from Earth that had been screaming in my thoughts for many of the planet's revolutions around its sun had grown much softer. I couldn't help but wonder if my decision to Earth birth had already eased some of their suffering. We finished our service and began our intake of the nutritional nectar. I projected a bright thought pattern to everybody making my announcement. I accepted the challenge to Earth birth for a human mission. Everyone stopped to consider this, including the elders, who did not smile or nod as they usually did when they approved a collaboration. For the first time since meeting with Angelic Mentor, I felt my flux with uncertainty. What if they were to stop my mission before it even started? After a few silent moments, one elder at last projected, We acknowledge your decision. We will consider the matter fully, Numan. After the gathering concluded, I returned to my sector to contemplate and prepare. A pang of sadness came over me. I knew it was my calling to earth birth, but leaving. Well, I would miss all of this. And what if I failed? I could be gone for lifetimes. Eventually, the call came from two elders. I went to the Great Hall to meet them. We are concerned that your sensitivity to the suffering of others makes a human mission most risky and have taken the liberty of calling your mentor for counsel. Angelic Mentor appeared and then seemed to take the side of the elders. It will be a misfortune if you can't find your way home and must endure repeating lifetimes on Earth until you accomplish your mission she projected. This is not an uncommon problem, even for members of my group who choose Earth birth. My thoughts whirled. I searched frantically for a valid argument in favor of my Earth birth, but facing the intimidating presence of my elders and mentor made it feel as though I was too insignificant to listen to. What could I say to convince them? Nothing. It seemed hopeless. I felt my heart breaking. I felt distraught. But then, a vivid thought formed in my mind. In this thought, I succeeded on my human mission and found myself back on the big blue planet. Something told me that I'd be able to do this successfully, that I couldn't give up. I projected my confidence, expressing that I would be farther along on my soul journey and closer to finishing the wisdom lessons of fifth density. I would be closer to making the transition to sixth density where Angelic Mentor called home. The elders considered it as though it were an amusing fantasy and grinned at each other. My emotions swelled in response. I could do this. Why didn't they believe in me? Eventually, they gazed expectantly upon Angelic Mentor. With respect, elders, she projected, eyes bright with confidence. I have determined that your younger member is prepared for earth birth. He is compelled by his heart, which is driving a deep desire to go where service is needed. That will guide him well. Would you assure us that this heart is being guided by wisdom, mentor? It came from one elder, but the other perked up and was extremely attentive to her answer. A moment ago, you did not seem so certain.
Angelic Mentor's reply came after an unusually long silence. I will guide him, she projected at last. Newman, will you allow me to empower your human journey by implanting a drive to overcome challenges? Yes, I will accept and benefit from that drive, I projected in response, feeling my spirits elevate higher than ever before. She materialized two crystals between us. Mind merging with her, I was guided to focus my mind on one crystal while she tapped into infinite energy, triangulating multiple points between our energy centers and the second crystal. The effect was to burn into me a metaphysical drive at a deeper level than the archetypal mind, one that would serve as an implant for overcoming challenges. Not even the veil of forgetting could obscure that. The elders were entranced. Of course, they knew of the procedure from arcane knowledge, but had likely never seen it performed before their very eyes. I leave you now. I will keep you in my mind, Newman. Her body faded, but her aura grew brighter, only to collapse into the same white orb that had entered the great hall not long ago. I was joyous and fearful at the same time. The elders led me to a platform floating knee level above the floor. I. Numan was going on a human mission. To prepare for transfer, supernate yourself, projected an elder. I did as I was told, lying face up on the platform. The elders positioned themselves on the ground nearby. Scanning for earth birth was arduous mental work, and finding a birth with a strong potential to help people was difficult. I learned quickly that it was 1958, and nations had nuclear missiles pointed at one another. The population of Earth was doubling every 50 years as there was an influx of souls from elsewhere in the galaxy and past lifetimes desiring the intense lessons offered by the human experience. The planet was moving into fourth density vibration, and that was making it difficult for humans who were more comfortable with the lower vibrations of third density. We mind-melded, and they guided me to triangulate and view potential births from halfway across the galaxy. We viewed thousands of image scenes, or visions of potentialities, different families and lives I could lead, from possible births. There was an ambitious young banker in London, his vivacious wife and their three-year-old daughter. She had just had her first checkup after learning she was pregnant with their second child. There was a brilliant chemist in New York who was married to a high school teacher and they were joyfully pregnant for the first time. There was a long-haul truck driver with four children and a homebound wife who lived in Las Vegas. They each had their problems, but the odds appeared good for a stable environment that would support me in my mission to help others. I decided on the United States, which had recently become the dominant nation on the planet, but where there was plenty of unrest after coming out of a major international conflict, World War II, I resonated with the disquiet in the minds of the Americans we viewed. The more we looked, the more confident I became that I could succeed. I had studied human history extensively, and it did not look difficult. I had my mentor's implant, but I didn't need it. I would fulfill my mission. Desired births to nurturing families were rarely available especially late in the pregnancy, as souls were already attached and even guarding their chosen human birth. If I was to find a birth that could best assure the success of my mission, I would have to remain attached to the fetus for many months, my activities and freedom restricted. The idea of slowing down until maternal gestation was completed provoked my annoyance and an unexpected fear of being trapped. Because souls had claimed the wombs of mothers and well-adjusted families, I decided to cast a wider net. But even so, days passed and the elders grew tired after I had declined many good choices, seeking something more, something that felt right. They decided to give me free reign to guide the search. Almost at once, I came across a lone 18-year-old in East Los Angeles, already in labor and on her way to the hospital. I delved deeper into the image scene, discovering that she was going to give the baby up for adoption. She had been rough on the fetus during pregnancy, even tried to miscarry. No soul was eager to choose such a rough beginning. Her soon-to-be-born baby's plight intrigued me and made for a great challenge. It also went against everything I had been advised and even common sense. 
Yet I knew humans to be a species taking small steps in their spiritual evolution. I was sure I could overcome whatever obstacles would be presented. And if I didn't do this, then the soulless baby might be stillborn. And that seemed a tragic outcome. I am going to enter this sad life and save it. I believe I can succeed against the odds. I vigorously projected my decision to the elders. I was fueled by my heart of compassion and less concerned about guidance from higher wisdom. The elders finalized my earth birth with the closing thought. You have made your choice and are prepared for the consequences. We wish you well, our younger brother. We will look in on you sometime. I could sense the elders' belief that some lessons needed to be learned the hard way. I left my physical form in suspension on our beloved Big Blue Planet. For a long moment, I was disconnected, free of any physical sensations, free of any sense of up, down, or sideways. Then a feeling of pressure came over me, followed by the horrible sensation of tight confinement within a human uterus. I struggled against it, trying to break free, pushing and pulling with tiny arms and legs. The elders calmed me with light energy, and my awareness began to fade. My last thought was, I will succeed on this human mission, or die trying.